my parents got divorced when I was like eight years old. And so, I don't know, I think they kind of missed it. I think my mom assumed that my dad would teach me about sex. But my dad was a, my dad was a gym teacher, an elementary school gym teacher. So everything he taught me about sex or girls or anything was like always through like a dodgeball metaphor. <laughs> Seriously, that's how he he'd be like he'd be like, Craig, <laughs> when you when you when you get into a relationship, it's like getting hit with a dodgeball. <laughs> it means you're out of the game. <laughs> I remember he said that. I was like, oh my god, really? Yeah, I get it. Um, and then he's like, and the only way to get back into the game, Craig, is if someone else catches a dodgeball. I don't like that. That's just dodgeball. <laughs> it's like, you're goddamn right, it's dodgeball. <laughs> so my dad didn't teach me, and my mother didn't, and then my, so my brother tried to. <laughs> When I was, and he, he was teaching me about, because he learned stuff in, in sex ed, and he would teach it, he'd be like, oh, Craig, you gotta hear what's going on. He's like, when a guy has, uh, when a man has sex with a woman, which I don't even know what, I was like, yeah, whatever, yeah, sex, I'll go with it, I'll go with whatever you're talking about. He has to wear this thing, like, like, like a like a harn like a harness. He was describing a condom, and I thought it was like like. Did you ever see De La Guarda? Like I thought it was like one of those fucking things. Like, one of those, like and then at one point when you it, there's a point in your life that's called puberty, where one you're gonna go into the bathroom and go to the bathroom and just white milk is gonna come out. <laughs> and because it's gonna be this milky substance. I'm like, ooh, he scared the shit out of me. I'm like, no. Not, none of it made sense, and none of it was really true. So I did the only thing that, uh, I turned to the only thing that um, a kid at like 12 uh, could, it's the dirty box of magazines in the woods, right? Isn't that right? Isn't there a dirty box in the woods that, that has these magazines? There's always this dirty fucking like under leaves you know it's just disgusting and you have to like look for the boob you know like oh, it's, all, it's all like cigarette burns and everything but that's how I like that's so disgusting that that's how I really started getting into like sex it had nothing to do with like the love between a man and a woman at all it's just like I wanna I wanna fuck something I don't know I wanna do that I wanna like I don't know tingling uh so I remember I used to find, try to find these magazines as much as I could, and they were in stores. Obviously, you could buy them, and they weren't dirty, they weren't like filthy in the stores. So I used to go to general stores, like when my parents would be somewhere else. I'm like, yeah, I'll just be over. I'm just gonna go over here and get some candy. <laughs> and I was in this store looking, and I knew it was bad. I knew I shouldn't be doing it. I mean, because most of the time I was doing it in the woods. Like, there's a reason there's a dirty box in the woods. <laughs> So I'm in the store, and this is this is a true story. I'm like, I must have been eight years old, and I was doing this. Anyway, I was looking at it, I was like, oh yeah. And I was in this aisle that was kind of secluded, and this guy walks around the corner, and he sees me <laughs> looking at it. I was like, and I was so embarrassed. And he goes, he's like, yeah, he goes, what you looking at? <laughs> to, to get out of it, I just looked at him, and I went, I went like this. I went, <laughs> I like mentally challenged, sorry, but you know. And the guy was like, whoa, and he just like ran away, and I was like, bingo, boom. <laughs> and I just kept looking. I thought that was brilliant. To this day, I'm so impressed that I did that. That he was like, instead of being embarrassed and having an excuse, I mean, I should still do that, you know what I mean? When I'm embarrassed. <laughs> So he left. <laughs> God. Uh, so, you know, I'm learning about sex in all these magazines, or, uh, you know, and some of them have, like, penetration, but it's all st it's pictures. It's just still. So that's my idea of sex. It's just, just like a man inserts it and, like, have, like, cooks it like a turkey for 30 minutes or something. You know what I mean? And then, <laughs> like, that's what sex is like. I have no idea really what the act is. I just think it's just like, it's like, <laughs> you know, all these, <laughs> you know, until this kid in school, you know the kid, it's the bad kid in school that sold weed and porn and everything, well that was
like, dude, and he's like, this first one, he goes, first one's on the house. And he hands me, he hands me a, like a video tab, a Betamax tape, you know? And I bring it home and I watch it and it's just like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh God, jeez, what is he doing to her? Like, what is happening? And like, it was so wet and gross. It was like, it's like, you know, it was the 80s too, there was a lot of hair, you know? We're, 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 we're just coming out of the 70s disco bush era, you know what I mean? So it was just like wet, I was like <laughs> Sorry for the sound effects, but that's what I saw. I'm just like <laughs> I'm like, oh God, he's pounding this girl, it's disgusting was the guy who had cable, you know, we always go to his house to sleep over, and we told him we liked him, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, dude, you're so cool. He's <laughs> the only guy with Cinemax in town, so we'd go to his house and watch Tender Cousins. <laughs> Remember that one? Emmanuel in Bangkok. Yes! That one? Like, I, I actually lost my virginity when I was 19, because I was so... I was kind of afraid, because I was a late bloomer. I was like a skinny kid, like until I was like my junior year in high school, I was really like, just, I was like a little wise ass kid that no one wanted to have sex with. You know? <laughs> but then I grew my senior year. I came back to high school and I remember it like, I was like the new kid in school. Cause I grew like six inches, <laughs> vertically, ladies. <laughs> um, <laughs> And every girl in school was like, who's this guy? Like, they, they finally started to, to recognize me, so I started this just, like, getting it on. Uh, so, so, and then, but, but I was still too shy. I remember I dated just one girl that year. And she wanted to have sex with me, and she said that. She was just like, let's do it. And I, and I chickened out. The guy, like, after all this time, like, with my, you know, my fantasies and my Miller Lite posters and Heather Locklear, you know what I mean? And Heather Thomas, right? And Candy and Randy on my ceiling and all these, right? All that stuff, all the paraphernalia in my room, I'm, the, you know, the moment comes and she asked me and I go, no, I can't do this right now. I got a, I got a thing. I can't, I gotta go. So that's it, that's my story. Thanks everybody, thanks for listening.